here I've got the truck pulled outside so you can see the frame and the fuel tank look pretty good in the sunlight so I need to paint these back rims and paint the hitch once I get done welding on that I didn't paint the spring steel just because it was flexing enough that it flaked off most of the paint so I need to find something that's a little bit less that will most likely not flex nearly as much as that spring steel will the molecular structure means that it's going to bond together and turn into pretty much hexagons next thing is to take this bed cut off that small hanger right there on each side and then I'll be ready to button it down I still am having issues with finding the right PTO. The one I put on in the last video actually turned out to be the wrong gear type. Regardless, I'm going to find me a Chelsea PTO that works so I can hook it up to that hydraulic pump right down there. You can just barely see it in the sunlight. But my main goal today is to get this thing at least placed on the back of this truck. So I'm getting the dump bed prepped and ready to go on the back of the frame of the truck. I don't have either of my pieces of pine wood. But I do have my protector for the cab, which as you can see, just a piece of wood. I've got it measured out to where it's going to push it back about 8 inches, which is just enough for the back of that frame. You can see it right down there to slide up right here. I wanted to run through something that I think is very needed. This truck has air brakes. So as you can see here, these are all lines that connect up to these cans or canisters that your brakes actually run off of. I spent just shy of probably 10 hours diagnosing and going through all these brakes to hook them up properly now most of that 10 hours is spent researching on stuff that i didn't need to research so now i can rebuild all these pneumatic relays with my eyes closed but that's not a bad problem a good bundle line here however they're distributed into two sizes one is half inch which you can see right here and the other is three eighths coming through here it looks like a big jumble but here, you've got half inch running all the way back into that back reservoir tank. Half inch is your supply. That is what's coming off of the compressor that's actually powered by the engine of the truck and another tank that's sitting just right underneath there to make sure that all your brakes always have constant PSI. If it was running directly off the compressor, it would be waved back and forward as the compressor actually does what it's supposed to and that's compress air. Here the 3 8 lines are all of your sending lines. So when you press down on the pedal inside of the cab, it actually sends an impulse using a valve. So you are opening and closing a valve that sends PSI into these two relays. Now, right at the top is where you're sending all that PSI to. It pushes down on a plunger to let flow through into this block and go to your cans. So just to list off everything that's connected up right here, you have your sending that is somewhat of your control. So you press on the pedal, air comes through here, pushes down on plunger on the inside of this little body. Then you get your air from this side. That is what's actually giving this flow to go through and come out right here. As this pushes down, it opens up a valve inside of here to let the compressed air from this back reservoir tank, running through that line right to here, come through and go to your canisters. This is an equalizer. This valve block right here, pneumatic relay, whatever you would like to call it, but I like to say valve block because it's easier to understand. It's a, a block or a square that has valves on the inside of it. This valve block is directly connected up to this valve block and this overall master relay. Now, if this has pressure and this doesn't, this little line will equalize. Therefore, if this has pressure and this doesn't, this will not have enough pressure to cycle. This is for your actual brakes. This is for your primary function, which is parking. As you can see on the back of that can, you've got two sections and two lines coming in. Up at the top, that line right there and that whole band is holding on your parking brake and parking brake spring. Right there is your push rod, and right there is your secondary. Your secondary is what actually moves when you press on the pedal, and is what is being controlled by this. Now, the larger line is going to go to the secondary, 
because really you have more flow over time and you are having to overcome more force by opening that secondary than taking on and off the parking brake. If the parking brake, which is controlled by this whole valve block right here, doesn't have pressure, it will sense it through this line. And therefore, this will not be able to cycle, cycling your secondary brakes. What I was running into, and something that I'd like to have a word of caution with, is I was cycling my parking brake, but for some reason, that push rod right there was not moving. That push rod is actually connected up to your secondary only. The reason it gets pulled back as your parking brake is released is because there's a little flat plate right there that allows it to move. So, when your parking brake is released, that gets released. So I wasn't understanding how it was not moving whatsoever. I had it hooked up to where at the same time my parking brake was getting air to take off and release the parking brake. It was sending the same amount of air to the brakes and it was acting like I was fully pressed on the pedal. I did that because there's actually two lines that control parking brakes. And you probably think, oh, it's because there's two parking brakes because there's two cans. That junction block right there doesn't allow that. You only need two supplies and it splits it. The reason is, if you don't have air to that parking brake, you don't have your master relay open. That is actually controlled by the same amount of air that is going to your parking brake to let it come on and off, which is through this port right here that opens and shuts the valve inside of here. That is why your supply is going through. It's all self-insuring that when you are moving down the road, you have to have above 65 PSI of pressure. And this is kind of just an overview because I've been working on it for so long and I feel somewhat comfortable with this system now, but people do not talk about it enough in this setting. You can go online and find a hundred different people that all have a blackboard and showing you what is going on inside of these valves and this basic, you know, functionary measure for all the canisters, but nobody sits down and points at exactly what they're talking about. not got much time before college but I've got one last thing I want to do before I get into a lot of other little things that I have to have happen for this thing to finally work. A few of those things would be including making new mounts to hold the bed onto the frame of this truck. The frame originally had mounts welded to it however the last owner after they sold it torched them all off and I suppose kept them for the next vehicle they were coming along to. So making new tie downs that could attach to the frame with some weld and then also attaching them to the frame on the opposite side to the dump bed to ensure there's no movement is a big priority. As well as finding a PTO or some way to power the hydraulics on this so I can raise and lower it. Then controls for those hydraulics and or PTO. And then wiring up everything so my lights are very easily visible. I don't want somebody driving behind me and then all of a sudden I'm taking a left turn and they don't look at the right spot. But for now, I'm going to grind all the old paint and corrosion off of this, on the outside at least, and paint it. Because it definitely needs a fresh coat of paint, and that's about all I have time for before school starts for me. But, I'll come back to it on the weekends whenever I have extra time, and hopefully soon enough I'll finally be able to get this and a lot of other projects on their merry way.
Well, it's better than nothing. You can see my reflection. And at least it's not multi-chromatic. It's now all at least one color, multiple shades of it, but one. Got the ledge right here, up the sides, and this side just about the same. Again, see the reflection. I didn't paint any of these so far because obviously I need to patch all that and I don't have metal with me right now. I'm going to do the underframe, but first I'm going to mark out all my spots that I want to fabricate on mounts with. And I'm going to have to do a whole other episode to take care of all the fabricating that I need to do back here. Well, even though it's not as much progress as I'd like to have had recorded, I'm probably going to have to cut this episode a little bit short. I really appreciate everybody coming along with me, but for the moment, this thing's going to have to go on the back burner in exchange for college. Now, that does not mean I'm not going to keep working on it whatsoever. I mean, this along with five or six other projects, including the 1206 David Brown uh, boat that I want to revive, and a couple of more small engines, and then fabrication of new shelves, it's all going to be a rush as soon as I get home on weekends to actually finish with all this stuff. But I'm definitely going to have all of the fabrication and everything else recorded. It's just I might have to have some weekends where it's offset like I have done prior. But I'm going to try to keep the same schedule, uploading every Saturday or Sunday. Not positive which one of something, at least. Now, it could be that from here on out, they're five-minute little short clip videos. Or I might have to do two weeks and take that time out of those two weekends to mesh together a full episode. But regardless... I just appreciate you guys, and I don't want to make you feel like I'm ignoring the channel whatsoever. I know I had a conversation with somebody in the comments on one of my last videos. Uh, I want to put effort towards this, and the reason I said I didn't want to number whenever I was saying thank you for 100 subscribers is because I enjoy doing this. It's not at all because I want to have something that I can make a million dollars off of and be the next big thing. I've got no interest. If I made money on the side with it, great. But really, I'm recording this mostly just to have kind of a thing to look back on, to know where I was at in dates of my life, and also to try and educate people, because that's what I do. I watch YouTube and read a lot of different material and go through owner's manuals to figure out what I'm working on. I would have never even understood where to start on this thing about a year and a half ago, but after a lot of research and finding the right truck, and then even more work, you come to a point where you're finally excited and happy and able to apply other things to the same kind of genre. When I work on this thing, I can work on pretty much all gas-powered engines. When I work on one of the diesels on the farm, it all applies to all other diesels. Same with tractors. I mean, at the core level, tractors and cars are very, very, very similar. Same components, same ideas, same sort of drive line. The applicability of these skills means that I have no end to what I can really work on. My main thing is time, and I don't have money. And this whole summer, I had a good bit of time. And now that I'm going into college, I've taken all the money that I could have spent on projects, and I'm trying to pay forward my education. So again, thank you all so much for watching. It's, an, it's insane, the support I've gotten. I'm going to try and keep on coming out with content and some educational stuff for you guys. If you'd, if you'd be happy to watch it, I'm more than happy recording it and uploading it. So, as always, take care of yourselves and come back anytime. Thank you, guys.